feel like you just you just humble yourself coming in the building. I yeah. feel like it's one of those things where it's like you can't, like you said, you can't bring that Hollywood stuff into the building. I was having fun um, and lead by example, and then obviously go out there and, and, and handle business. It only took us two weeks for us to have a brand new update on Caleb Williams. And before people look at me and say, Mike, you're just this gigantic Caleb Williams hater. I want you to know that I want this individual to succeed more than I've ever wanted anything. This is my next decade's worth of content, riding on this guy succeeding in the NFL. It's just some of his behavior is bizarre to me. So before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. How do we get all that out of the way? Break! easily my favorite promotion. All Caitlin Clark needs is a single point for her square to convert, which means we only need to make one more pick on prize picks in order to 3x our money. You guys have been making a lot of money on prize picks, and if you guys need help making picks, I give away my picks for free on my Instagram story, at the flight mic. And if you haven't signed up for prize picks, right now when you use my promo code flight mic, you'll get a deposit match up until $100. Make sure you check out my story right now to see if I entered my Caitlin Clark pick, and thank you prize picks for the sponsor my check one two one two what's going on everybody there were a couple of comments in my last video saying mike you're the only one that is dubbing caleb williams as the next coming of patrick mahomes roll the clips i watch him play he's the only quarterback pro or collegiate that the way he plays reminds me of patrick what's happened with caleb williams they are labeling him the next Patrick Mahomes. With Mahomes feels really accurate um, now, and he's got a good head on his shoulders. Everybody watches Patrick and sees all the cool things he can do. And, um, I always said, even in high school, um, that I don't think there's anything obviously it's special, but I don't think there's anything that I can't do that he's doing out there. Yes, I want you to know that's a gigantic parody because it seems like each and every couple of years, there is a player that is being dubbed as the next Andrew Luck or the next Patrick Mahomes, which I'm all here for. I love doing deep dives on these players. I love learning about their personalities. I've been making football content for about four years now, and I must say, I don't think I've ever had the pleasure of evaluating a prospect like Caleb Williams. There has never been a total package of a player that is truly a tremendous football player, but also carries a significant amount of red flags. Now, I wanted to give you a disclaimer. Just because a player has a very eccentric personality and does weird shit like calling his haters sheep. Uh, I mean, everybody wants to be in these two 12 and a half shoes right here. So some opinion of a sheep, you know, lying somewhere about that, so. You know, keep moving on, keep fighting. I don't. Doesn't necessarily mean he's gonna be a bad football player. And I wanna make sure that I make that a point of emphasis over and over and over again. Because we've made plenty of content on Aaron Rodgers. He's an awesome football player. He's one of the most bizarre personalities we've ever had the pleasure of making content on. Same goes with Antonio Brown. The man is one of the most bizarre personalities in all of football. And he was so bizarre that he quite literally walked off the field at a specific point and turned his back on the game of football. Although he's trying to come back and play for the Pittsburgh Steelers, as we mentioned in our Le'Veon Bell OnlyFans video, which yes, Le'Veon Bell has an OnlyFans now, but I digress. In our last video, we talked about how strange some of Caleb Williams' behavior was, and this isn't an individual that is a stranger to odd behavior. Back in September, Caleb Williams' father said that he might not even declare for the NFL draft. Next thing you know, the decision was to declare for the NFL draft, which is no duh, especially if you're going number one overall, but then came a different problem. Caleb Williams' father wanted ownership stake in any team that selected his son, which is something Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers attempted to get in the past, but to no avail. In the very beginning, it seemed like Caleb Williams didn't want to go to the Chicago Bears. And this was all the way back in the beginning of the season when even Justin Fields was struggling under center. It seems like as the offseason went on, the Chicago Bears seemed like a pretty sweet situation, especially considering the recent moves they've made. But still, Caleb Williams would still like tweets suggesting that he would prefer to go 
go to a different team than the Chicago Bears, maybe the Washington Commanders, which are also a sweet situation. So a few weeks ago, we made a video on how Caleb Williams showed up to the NFL Combine, declined to throw the football, which is fine. Historically, we've seen a lot of quarterbacks attend the Combine, but decline to throw, but also decline medical exams. His reasoning why didn't really make a lot of sense either. And obviously when you start doing things that's not traditional, whether you're at a school like USC. And I support you 100%. Yeah. Trust me. Whether you're here at, at the combine yeah, that's yeah. been going on for, I don't know how many years, but a long time. Right. So um, <clears throat> I'd say the, the main thing has just been, you know, it was a decision with my family and my team. Um, and, and it really came down to not all 32 teams can, can draft me. So I give all 32 teams yeah. um, my personal medical things. There's nothing there. I played all 30, yeah. how many ever games I played. Never I don't even remember you being banged up right to the slightest. I've never yeah. came off the field unless my it. helmet came off and the ref took me off. Right. Um, and so, you know, my thing has just been, you know, give it to the teams that, that are going to pursue me. Um, so all my visits, I'll be doing medicals, but just didn't des didn't decided not to do it here. In a sense, I, you know, have an idea of where I'm going to go. Not the place, but the... Um, not yeah, the, the general spot. area the general of the draft. We know the spot. You're going yeah. in we the top spot. two picks. You're going yeah. number one, bro. Yeah. Just yeah. to let you know. You're going one. <laughs> and then the media had their opportunity to tear Caleb Williams to shreds. My personal favorite being this question. Good morning, everybody. Eventually, they asked him what his thoughts were on the Chicago Bears. The Bears are, was an eight and nine team last year, um, I believe. And uh, seven and seven to 10, sorry. And, and um, you know, it's... That's pretty good for a team that has the first pick. Um, and, and they got a good defense. Um, they got good players on offense. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's pretty exciting, you know, if you could go into a situation like that. Where he wants to go the most. Where do you want to be? Um, whoever, whoever picks first. Um, you know, it's been a dream of mine to go first. And so whoever picks first, um, can't wait. And his thoughts on his hometown Washington Commanders. Um, you know, it's it's like I've said before, it's familiar. It's it's, it's hometown, um, as everybody knows. And uh, you know, it'd be it'd be really cool to, to be back there and, and, and experience that. Um, the the meeting went really well. Um, and and um, you know, being around those, you know, everybody was in the room. So being around everybody, um, you know, just getting getting the taste of you know how they are, who they are, because like you said, everything's new there. People try criticizing him for the fact that he paints his fingernails and cried after the loss to Washington last year. You've received a lot of crit or you know criticism when you showed your emotion with your parents. Yeah. What would you say to the people that were taking shots at that and? and and how that made you feel that hearing that criticism? Yeah, there's not many people in the world that get the experience what I experience every every game day, every practice day. Um, you know, so it kind of goes back to, um, you know, it kind of it always kind of goes back to that for me. It's you know, it's something that I only get to experience. Um, it's something that I really care about, um, which is not only winning the game, but you know, doing it with my teammates. So every time we lose, I feel like I let my teammates down. But at the end of the day, I just felt like the media really wanted to tear this young man to shreds, considering the fact that he comes off as a very cocky guy. And it seemed like his demeanor and his overall attitude was the primary reason why some of his future teammates didn't want to play with him. Now in the past, DJ Moore suggested that Justin Fields was just fine at the QB position. Somebody asked me that last week. I'm still like, bro, where are y'all seeing this? Like, what, what makes him not the... Uh quarterback for the Chicago Bears right now. I get y'all got everybody coming out. What, it's like two of them? I don't think they better than Justin, so they cool. And it seemed like for the most part, his Chicago Bears teammates would have preferred to stay with Justin Fields as opposed to Caleb Williams. And this kind of reminds me of how LeBron James's future teammates reacted when they found out that they were selecting him with the number one overall pick in the 03 draft. We have better players than him in his position already on our team, bro. Um, his potential is Probably the sky's the limit for him, though. Getting the Brown is just gonna add add to what we need, and you know, just make make things a little bit easier. And he will come in and make an immediate impact, like a Karan Butler, you know, did for the Miami Heat. I don't think you can really just bring a high school player in and really just think your team gonna really turn around like that. If he come. You know what I'm saying? He can just hop on our bandwagon. 
and hopefully we can do something big. And for the most part, it seems like his current teammates, which are very significant members of the Chicago Bears, kind of feel the same way about Caleb Williams. Now, you might be thinking, Mike, what makes you think that he's definitely going to get drafted by the Chicago Bears? Well, I'm going based upon, according to Caleb Williams, who is already making it sound like he's a Chicago Bear. I've known Keenan for a little bit now, hung out. Um, he was at the he was at the Chargers at the time. Now he's at the Bears for like it says here for a fourth round pick, which is crazy. He had his best <laughs> year last year. He's a beast. Um, good guy. Um, awesome dude to be around. He can give you a lot of knowledge. So it seems like the moment that Justin Fields was traded, a lot of Chicago Bears players weren't necessarily excited. DJ Moore has been on record saying that Justin Fields should be their quarterback multiple times during the offseason. And the moment Justin Fields was traded, he just understood the reality of the situation that it's a business and there's really nothing that you could do in this case but in addition to that you have Jalen Johnson who is literal proof that Chicago is building something special considering the fact that this is an individual that wanted to be traded about a year ago but then elected to stay on and signed a contract extension with the Chicago Bears presumably because he understands that the Chicago Bears are truly building something special here based upon the decisions Ryan Poles has been making but this man went on the Up and Adam show and gave Caleb Williams a gigantic warning which kind of gives you an idea of how a lot of Chicago Bears players currently view Caleb Williams. Like you just you just humble yourself coming in the building. I yeah. feel like it's one of those things where like you can't, like you said, you can't bring that Hollywood stuff into the building, especially now with guys who play this game. I feel like at a high level for for consecutive years in the league. It's when it's like, nah, that what you did in college, the the Hollywood. It's like, nah, that 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 you got to prove yourself. That stuff like that doesn't matter. <laughs> but I feel like you, you got to. You got to get to you got to get to know him, too. I think it's a fine line between trying to prove a point to him, but also getting to know him. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, we want him to be the absolute best he can be. I mean, that's what we're bringing him in for to to win games. So I think truly just learning who he is as, as a person, learning him deeper than just all the Hollywood stuff you see, but actually trying to learn and get to know him. And then from there, knowing what pushes him. And I don't think what Jalen Johnson is saying is necessarily bad. I mean, it makes a lot of sense given Caleb Williams' history already. It seems like this individual takes the tiniest little thing and blows it up. Whether it's declaring for the NFL draft and wanting an ownership stake. Or being the presumed number one overall pick and saying, Hey, maybe I don't declare this year. Or going to the draft combine, declining to throw, which is normal, but then declining medical exams on top of that. It's kind of like that famous quote from Aaron Rodgers. You know how Aaron Rodgers hates distractions? Where he said, Anything in this building that we're doing that has nothing to do with winning needs to be assessed. Everything that we do has to have a purpose. The expletive that has nothing to do with winning has to get out of the building, which is what Aaron Rodgers said about a month and a half before being a potential vice presidential candidate for RFK. So I can understand where Jalen Johnson's coming from, because at the same time, I don't think any quarterback in NFL history is going to come into a better situation than Caleb Williams. I mean, I think the only quarterback in NFL history that would have gone into a better situation that was better than Caleb Caleb Williams might have been Trey Lance, who was selected with the number three overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft after the San Francisco 49ers gave up two first round picks to swap first round picks and then play Trey Lance for six games and then trade him to the Cowboys for a fourth round pick. In the case of Caleb Williams, he's coming to a team that has Cole Komet as a tight end, DJ Moore and Keenan Allen as wide receivers, DeAndre Swift as a running back, really good defensive players in Montez Sweat and Jalen Johnson already on the defense. You have the number one overall pick this year and the number nine overall pick next year. You still have the Panthers 2025 second round pick as well, which could potentially be very valuable if the Panthers have a bad season this year. So Caleb Williams is being placed in a really good situation considering the fact that the Bears also just gave up a fourth round pick to trade for Keenan Allen. Now, this is where I think my basis of this video comes from. Of course, Jalen Johnson warning Caleb Williams about leaving the Hollywood stuff behind is significant. DJ Moore also coming out and saying probably the weirdest quote of all time that I hope he just comes in and gets ready to work. You can't worry about the legacy of Justin Fields, which with all due respect, I don't think Justin Fields really left the legacy behind. In year one, he was playing for Matt Nagy. They fire Matt Nagy. 
Nagy. They also decided to trade away a bunch of their best defensive players. So Justin Fields didn't really have the greatest situation going into year two. And then in year three, you finally get him DJ Moore and he was starting to improve towards the end. But I guess at that point, a huge upgrade was available alongside the opportunity to reset the clock with a rookie scale contract. So they decided to move on from Justin Fields. More power to the Chicago Bears for trading Justin Fields into a situation where he might be able to start in week one. Russell Wilson's on a veteran minimum contract. So for all you know, Justin Fields could be the week one starter for the Pittsburgh Steelers if Russell Wilson doesn't even make it through training camp. I mean, hell, it happened to Cam Newton when Mac Jones was drafted. It could potentially happen here. But the reason I made this video was primarily because Caleb Williams had one of the weirdest pro days of all time. Now, you know how I feel about pro days, guys. Ever since that Zach Wilson pro day where he threw that incredible like 60 yard bomb, I don't trust these over rehearsed displays of athleticism. Although I do appreciate watching them. I think this is an incredible throw, but I also understand there's no pads and there's no pass rush coming at them. Favorite part of this pro day had nothing to do with the football field. It didn't have anything to do with Caleb Williams assuming that he was gonna be selected by the Chicago Bears and that the Bears wouldn't trade the pick to the Washington Commanders. But my favorite part of this was just how weird Caleb Williams is as an individual. If you didn't think declining medical exams were weird or demanding a portion of the team before even playing a snap of NFL football was weird, how about pretending like you don't see your future wide receiver who is coming off of the best season of his career literally chose the Bears over the Chargers for you? Because that's what Caleb Williams did. Take a look at this. Caleb Williams is walking into his pro day and he's looking, he's like, oh, I see Keenan Allen. Let me turn my head the exact opposite direction and pretend I'm talking to someone else. Keenan Allen is sitting there like eyeing him down like, uh, hello, I'm here. Finally, Caleb Williams turns around like, ah, I must've missed you, bro. What's good, Keenan? What up? <laughs> I, I hate when people do that. It's like, why are you doing this? It's just such a bizarre interaction. I mean, this is a guy that is literally going to elevate your career potentially, and you're pretending like you don't see him. At the end of the day, I think Caleb Williams is in a really good situation here to potentially be the face of the Chicago Bears and possibly even the best quarterback in Bears history. His mannerisms and behavior are absolutely hysterical. Kind of reminds me of Aaron Rodgers in a sense, but obviously not late 40s Aaron Rodgers, more like Aaron Rodgers coming out of college. And I can't wait to see how this kid's career pans out. I hope he succeeds because I'll have content for a very long time based upon how this guy conducts himself. I think he's personally a hysterical human being. And I wonder if these micro problems that he's carried with the existing members of the Chicago Bears will carry on into the regular season. Let me know what you guys think about Caleb Williams in the comment section down below. Are you rooting for him to succeed? Are you rooting for him to fail? Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. And I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.